Okay, for the people that were complaining in the comments that every week's a big week. Oh my God, every week's a big week. How am I supposed to know? Here is your week that nothing is happening, or at least I should say not a lot is happening. However, uh, some people might hear, oh, this isn't a big week, and they might take that as a opportunity to not do anything. However, I would also challenge some of you who go, oh, thank God, there's nothing going on in the astrology this week. Maybe nothing will happen to my life. Maybe during this week, this would be a really good week to do things. I've talked about this before. Uh, when there's a lot of energy going on, sometimes, you know, the universe is just throwing things at you and you kind of have to respond to most of it. You don't even have time to make your own moves versus when there's not a lot going on in the astrology rather than just being, like, oh, the, let me take a break from my life. Let me just not do anything. How about taking this opportunity to actually make the big changes that you need to when there isn't a lot of going on? So you don't have all of your fucking excuses that, you know, you throw because, Again, something that I bring up a lot and I'm going to keep bringing up and that I'm, again, I'm going to make some, I've been really behind on my delineation podcast. I've, I have a lot that I'm going to be catching up here soon. Um, stop it. Stop using this stuff to enable your shitty behavior and your shitty uh, uh, self monologue. Like your, your internal voice, you, you, you guys just find, and I'm not speaking to everyone here. A lot of you are on your shit. A lot of you are killing it. And I want to acknowledge that. But a lot of you will also use things like astrology, tarot, and just all of this other shit to enable that shitty monologue that you have in your head that tells you that you're not good enough, you're not worthy, that you're a piece of shit, that, that you can't have this or that you can't have that or it's everyone else's fault. Stop fucking enabling that shit and take some personal fucking responsibility. Like, seriously. I'm not kidding with this Jupiter and Aries stuff. I'm going to be talking like this for a while while Jupiter is in Aries. I'm on some shit right now. So anyway, this is not a big week in the astrology. Let me go over the highlights with you. Let me show you why. Mercury's going to be trining Pluto. This is nothing new. This has been going on forever. Mercury's been trining Pluto as it entered shadow on April 26th. Mercury's been back into Taurus now for quite some time. Uh, it's now direct, right? So we don't have the Mercury retrograde excuses anymore. Mercury's now direct. But as Mercury trines Pluto... You know, there is going to be some intensity to it. Uh, I mean, it's still going to be on Al Gold too, but that's, I don't feel like talking about that right now. Um, and Venus is going to conjoin Uranus. So, um, you know, Venus conjoining Uranus will be kind of weird. Uh, it will, I think on paper it sounds good. I don't think it will be good for everybody, but I do like it on paper. But I guess we will discover what that's about as we kind of go on through the week. We're starting this week on Monday uh, with the moon ingressing into Virgo. Uh, again, we had that new moon in Gemini. We had that weird cancer moon that I'm recording. This as the moon's like about to leave cancer. And it's like opposite Pluto, that moon in cancer transit. Ooh, that was rough. Um, but, uh, moon's going to be entering Virgo. And as it enters Virgo, it will be trining Venus. This is nice because here's the thing. Uh, sun's still in Gemini, right? We're in Gemini season, little, little manic, just a little bit, but as the moon's in Virgo, Oh, is this the wrong? You gotta be fucking kidding me. Okay, I put the wrong, so this is the wrong day. Don't trust this. Again, Mercury is still retrograde as I'm recording this, so I actually have that excuse. But anyway, uh, we're going to pretend that the moon's actually at the beginning part of Virgo. And as the moon ingresses into Virgo, right, I, I'm a broken record with this stuff, guys. The moon, our emotions, how we feel, what we're reflecting on. And what I, what I appreciate about the moon is like, you know, for example, being hangry. Like, you, some people don't even realize that they're, like hangry, like you could see someone really upset and they don't even realize that it's like that, that they are upset. They're just so into the moment. Uh, that's kind of like what the moon is like. Like it's sometimes hard to gauge, you know, unless you're really aware and you're really checked in, it's sometimes hard to gauge that stuff. But as the moon goes into Virgo, we're talking about, again, the, the Virgo stuff, details, organization, logistics, planning, all of the Mercury stuff. But as the moon's in Virgo, I always try to say like, you're going to get things like anxiety if you're not doing something, if you're not organizing things, if you're not cleaning things, if you're not getting your shit on point, it's going to cause you some anxiety. That moon in Virgo are emo like, what's well, the same thing with like the moon in Gemini. If you're not like expressing yourself with the moon in Gemini you, and you're, and you're too lost in your head, you're going to, you're going to psych yourself out. When the moon's in Virgo, you need tangibility. You need to be putting like, well, for example, um, I say this all the time, uh, but Idle Hands of the Devil's Workshop, 
And that moon in Virgo, you can just stir all of this shit up, I think, you know, because Virgo is trying to get to the to the point. It's Virgo is like secretly Scorpio. That's how I feel like Virgo and Scorpio are like best buds uh, in terms of, you know, just the shit that they kind of do. But as the moon goes into Virgo, we're focusing on tangibility. We're focusing on change. Moon and Virgo, too. We're talking about like. I don't want to just say just getting your shit together, but what I want to bring up is how the moon, again, this is the wrong slide, uh, but the moon's going to be trining Venus. And Venus is in Taurus. What I, what I, you know, I, of course, I love planets being in their home signs. However, I, it's so easy to ignore the good times, right? In our brains, we only remember the bad times. We only remember when things didn't go our way. We don't ever actually remember when things were good. And I mean, like Saturn's in Aquarius. Yeah, that's got its problems. Venus is in its home sign. Mars is in its home sign. And I think it's so easy to just be like, well, for example, like I really, 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 and I mean really hate uh, when people say, Cameron, when is the astrology getting better? Motherfucker, it's literally, it could be better right now if you chose to make it better. Like again, uh, it's, it's so critical to understand because so many people in this astrology community just use this shit to enable like, oh, this is happening, can't do this. Oh, this is happening, blah, 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 blah. Venus is in Taurus when we're talking about value, indulgence, pleasure, um, just fulfillment in general. Venus is in Taurus. She wants to feel comfortable. She wants to feel secure, right? She wants that physical security, like cash, like uh, any type of value, really. And as Venus gets closer and closer to Uranus and the North Node, that's only going to intensify. However, as Venus is in Taurus, uh, I, I say this because there's a lot of, here's the thing, when people are like, Cameron, when's the astrology getting better? It's pretty fucking good right now. To be honest with you, it's pretty fucking good. We have a lot of shitty transits this winter. So if you're expecting things to get better, I mean, it's all, I mean, look at the state of the world. If you think anything's getting better anytime soon, you are smoking dope. Venus is in Taurus. There is a this is a time to uh, uh, focus on value. This is a time to focus on security. This is a time to really uh, um, plant yourself in that. And I think as the moon's in Virgo, trining Venus, get things together. What's gonna make you feel good? Moon in Virgo, like maybe that's cleaning shit up. Do you know how Do you know how easy it is to get out of your depression or your manic episode by just literally cleaning? Do you know how easy it is? And also when people are like, Cameron, I'm depressed. Cameron, I got the blah, 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 blah. If you are losing it and you're freaking out and if your shit is not clean, that is the number one thing that you should do. If, you're, if your shit is not clean on Monday and you're losing it, you need to fucking do some cleaning, asshole. Get your fucking shit clean. Straight, straight up. Because it is really hard. It is so easy to bake in that depressive mindset and to bake in that self-sabotage talk when your shit's dirty because you, you're living like a fucking pig. Love yourself. Clean shit up for the love of fucking God. Um, so as that moon's in Virgo trining Venus, like you have to apply these things, right? The moon in Virgo, you have to put your hand somewhere, like be tangible, touch stuff, do things. Because otherwise, if you're just sitting there idle, you're going to lose your mind. But moon's going to be in Virgo trining Venus. This is really good for applying things. This is really good for tangibility. This is really good for getting the things done. And I talk a lot about like the moon and Capricorn is like, oh, you know, like check out, do things seriously. This is maybe not even a time to check out, but this is a time to take stock. Do your personal inventory. Do you need more, you know, self-love and not the self-love that indulges all your bullshit, but the self-love that holds you accountable, the self-love that like actually puts you in the state that you know you want to be in, not the state that society wants you to be in. Take some, take your personal inventory. Do you need, you know, do you need to communicate more? Do you need more support from your loved ones? What, what do you need? Take that personal inventory. Moon and Virgo, Trining Venus. Uh, again, this is about getting the things together that you want and that you value. Uh, we go to Tuesday. On Tuesday, the moon is going to be still in Virgo, but it's going to be Trining Uranus, but it's going to be squaring the sun. So, um, you know, when you see like, I think in, in my personal opinion, again, this is the same chart. But in my personal opinion, uh, something that can get problematic is when you have like, I think any mutable squares are just kind of frustrating in my opinion, especially like when you have like sun and Gemini, moon and Virgo, it's a little bit kind of loud, noisy. Um, right now, I know I've been talking a lot about this, but I'm producing music, got an album on the way. Um, it's taking some time because I got 10,000 other things to do, but 
when you're not, it's super easy to just, have you ever just fucked with too much stuff and then all of a sudden you don't know what you're doing? Um, like if maybe you're an audio engineer, maybe you did a little bit too tweaking and then it sounds all weird and you're not really sure what that sound is coming from. Uh, I feel like for maybe, I'm trying to think of a, a way, a, a good analogy that's not necessarily like audio engineers, but maybe in like artists or um, I could see this with like hair, like for for women, if you like, you know, cut your own hair or do your own thing, like it's super easy to just kind of like get lost in making these tiny adjustments before you actually know, you know, when to stop. And so as the sun's in Gemini and the moon's uh, in Virgo squaring it, this will feel a little conflicted, like the sun's in Gemini, right? our vitality and the sun is like literally like our personal energy uh is being expressed through gemini right we're talking about again communication intellect uh rationalization we're in this open mind but the moon in virgo is like oh but i need it to be this way and the sun in gemini as well that doesn't really make sense so there's gonna i feel like on tuesday you're just gonna be kind of a little bit internally conflict uh conflicted it's really not that big of a deal it's just you know no one to stop. Well, it's one of those things of you could turn all the little knobs and do all the little things that you want to, but it may not get the result that you want. So you have to know when to stop, right? You have to know when to like be like, okay, am I going too far? Maybe take even a step back. Maybe work on something else before you just kind of overdo something. And I don't even want to say just overdo it because this isn't like a, oh my God, you're overdoing it. This is much more of like, it's just going to be a little confusing. Like sun and Gemini, moon and Virgo, your emotions and your and, and and how you feel, it's gonna be a little conflicted. But the moon is gonna be trining Uranus. Not the biggest deal in the world. You know, I, I get a lot of flack for not talking about trines the Pluto or trines the Uranus. And it's like, guys, these are the outer planets. Um, I mean, unless like the moon is your time lord and you might be feeling it, but it's like this is the only big transit that we've got going on, and it's not that big of one. But I think as the moon's in Virgo, and we are what I will what I will say is um I want you to notice that the North Node is getting closer and closer to Uranus. Venus is getting closer and closer to Uranus, and Uranus is in Venus's home. So there is a lot more energy in that Uranus and Taurus area. What have we learned about Uranus and Taurus, guys? Do you know? Nothing is fixed. Nothing is stable. Nothing is secure. Go back to, uh, you know... I mean, Uranus and Taurus has been a big thing about, like, the food. I'm noticing a lot about, like, how... There's this whole corporate veganism, and then there's also this rise of, like, grass-fed beef, and, like, there's, I don't know, in my, in my opinion, that's going to eventually clash at some point. But, you know, Uranus, uh, innovation, Uranus, uh, independence, breakthrough opportunities. But in Taurus, it's like, you know, we're talking about the earth here. We don't want the earth to shake. We don't want the things that we want stability and bedrock on. We don't want those things to, you know, have uh, or be unstable. But they are. And I mean, we're also in a Saturn Uranus square. Supply chains are fucked. Food's fucked. We've got so many things that are up in the air, right? Um, with Venus conjoining Uranus eventually, we're going to be talking about that here soon. Um, there are opportunities to be inventive. There are opportunities to do things differently. Like, I think I said this last week, possibly, but a lot of Uranus and Taurus is like, if you are still looking at value and security uh the same as you were your whole life you are wrong we are in 2022 we are plugging into the fucking metaverse we are blasting off into unknown territory when it comes to tech and innovation and all and all of this stuff you have to be on your feet you have to be innovative you have to actually understand how like you know what is value for you what is security for you and you're honest you know is really going to shake that area up are you going to be doing things, you know, in an innovative and different way? And I'm kind of ranting here, but I want to talk, and we're going to talk more about Uranus in just a minute. But as the moon trines Uranus, this does give you an opportunity to kind of have a little bit of a breakthrough moment. You know, it's it's oftentimes when you are focused. Um, you know, honestly, this is super, like, I really love doing readings for people. And this is a little selfish simply because I get to get out of my own head and out of my own life and my own problems. And I get to solely focus on helping someone, serving someone. And I don't have to just, because in my head, I'm I'm worried about my problems. I got an ego and I'm too fixated on that all day long. But then when, and I'm bringing this up because when the moon's in Virgo, and again, when when you are investing your energy into something, whether that's cleaning, whether that's monotonous tasks. The moon in Virgo loves monotonous tasks. 
as that trines Uranus, you can have those breakthrough opportunities. You can't see something, you know, uh, I don't even want to say electric because that's a little corny. But I think as the moons in Virgo trining Uranus, there is an opportunity for things to um, work out in your favor in terms of finding an innovative, an innovative way to do something. Moon in Virgo is like, you know, when you really sit there and, uh, you know, let your subconscious kind of work things out for you. Uh, and you let your subconscious work things out by putting, your, getting your hands busy with something, getting your mind focused on something. Uh, when you are focused, then you kind of come back to that situation that you were dealing with. You kind of have a lot more of a uh, better perspective on the situation. So the thing is, the moon's in Virgo, trying to Uranus. Make sure you're you're investing your energy into something, uh, and that might lead you to you know seeing your situation in a different light. And you might say, oh, wow, this is where I could be innovative. This is where I could be different. This is where I could break through the other side. This is where um, the changes can occur. And it's that moon in Virgo trying to Uranus. Like you just have to get things in order and you just, sometimes you just have to do the math and you just have to do the numbers to see what the problem is or the, the solution. So we get to Wednesday. On Wednesday, the moon is going to be trining Mercury. Uh, after it trines Mercury, it will then enter Libra and it will go opposite Jupiter. Um, pretty good day on Wednesday to be on. Again, not a big week this week, guys. So no more excuses for, oh my God, the astrology. Oh my God, my life. Not a big week. And again, I'm still going to get people in the comments be like, Cameron, this week changed my life. And you know, what I appreciate about astrology is so many people are here. Like when I read the comments, it is crazy. The, the vast uh, uh, spectrum of uh, experiences you guys have and, and just what you guys are going through in your lives. And so for, again, this might be, for example, like, let's say, uh, you know, Mercury is your time Lord or something like that, or maybe this is a bigger day for you, but on paper, it's not that big of a day. Uh, it is pretty, um, decent in my opinion. And if we look at the chart, so the moon will be at the last degrees of Virgo and trine Mercury. Again, we still have Mercury stationing direct. It is now away from Saturn, which is important, right? Mercury really applied to Saturn and things are getting really tight. Mercury is still moving slowly, but it is moving away from Saturn at this point. And uh, Saturn and Mercury are mu mutually moving away from each other. That was like really hard to say for some reason. Um, as the moon is trining Mercury and Virgo, again, the, the thing is, is like you don't have to. Uh, have you ever built IKEA furniture? Here, this might be a good example. If you build IKEA furniture and if you've never built IKEA furniture before, and you get all these pieces together, you're like, how, how in the world can I build this? But if you just read the fucking directions and you just apply it, you don't have to know, you don't have to be a carpenter, but if you just apply it, it will get built. That moon in Virgo trining Mercury and Taurus is like, again, just follow the rules, follow the trail, follow the guidelines. And I'm not saying like, you know, just keep your head down and like, you know, don't question anything, but it's like, the moon in Virgo trining Mercury and Taurus is like, you just have to apply things. Like if you just get yourself organized and if you just be patient, you know, I, I know a lot of people that use ADHD as an excuse for everything. And you're talking to someone who every single one of my teachers called my parents to get me on fucking Ritalin. And that shit never fucking happened, which I'm really glad for. Um, but again, when you can just sit there and it's going to take a lot for people to just sit down and focus, and it is a challenge, but if it's challenging, that means you need to do it. So as the moon's in Virgo trining Mercury, just get your shit organized, and when you've got all your ducks in a row, and all your T's are crossed and your I's are dotted, things will probably look a lot better. You're going to feel very good, because you know your inventory. You know what you have, and you know what you don't have. And the thing is, as the moon's trining Mercury, Mercury's in Taurus, it's moving forward. Again, it's on the north node. For better or for worse, we're doing what we're doing. And I think it's the moon's in Virgo and we're just kind of getting organized. Things are feeling very clear at this moment. The plans are made. The logistics are clear. But then the moon enters Libra and we can kind of take a breath, in my opinion. Like, the big thing to talk about is the moon's going to go into Libra and go opposite Jupiter. Which, again, on paper is actually pretty good. But the moon, you know, we want to balance things out. We want to be fair. We want to be balanced. But the moon's in Libra. Like, we need harmony. We need peace. We need to literally like kind of relax a little bit. I'm a moon in Libra. Like I need as much as I, I, I have a Mars in Gemini, as much as I love yelling and debating moon in Libra is I like to be peaceful when I can. I like to be, you know, 
not so all over the place. But as the moon goes into Libra, you got to balance things out. You got to find that, again, that kind of right spot. Everything in, in life is about balance. And so as the moon goes into Libra, and what is also nice too is, I mean, look how much Venus stuff we have going on. Venus is in Taurus, North Node in Taurus, Uranus in Taurus, Mercury in Taurus, Moon's in a Venus ruled sign. A lot of Venusian energy here. But uh, the other thing I want to bring up is the moon's going to go into an air sign while the sun's in the air sign. It's just kind of like getting the windows open and getting that nice breeze rolling in. Um, it feels a little bit better than just that stagnant air. Like moon in Virgo is very, again, I, one of the, uh, a lot of funny things were said to me on Twitter. And one of the funniest things I ever saw someone say was that moon, uh, that Virgo is musty. And I still, I think about that comment all the time. And I just think there's something very stale about Virgo sometimes. So again, let op open the windows, letting some energy come in uh, is a big deal. But as the moon goes opposite Jupiter and Aries, like, here's the thing. Jupiter, faith, belief, uh, idealism, too, a lot of the times. Jupiter is also going to be, you know, uh, gratitude as well. A lot of you need to really pr practice gratitude because uh, we... <laughs> I just see a lot of I, I I like to make fun of Americans because Americans love to complain about how underprivileged they are. And I just think about everyone else in the whole entire world listening to that. Be like, wow, must be so hard to be an American where you have like literally every right that no one else has in this <laughs> fucking world. But anyway, it's Jupiter and Aries. Jupiter expanding Jupiter beliefs. And it's an Aries war confrontation like intense. It, it's a bit it's a bit it, it's, it's an intense transit. It's not subtle. But as that moon in Libra goes opposite Jupiter, where is it like, hey, kind of like, you, you, what's that saying? Cool your jets. You need to cool your jets a little bit. And Jupiter in Aries is if you come, like, you don't always have to fight to win. A lot of it's just confidence. That moon in Libra is like, again, Jupiter in Aries is like, you can kick down the fucking door and be like, this is who I am, motherfucker. And I mean, go for it, in my opinion. But as that moon's in Libra, you can be a little classy about it. That moon in Libra is like confidence is all about energy. And like, if you don't have, I mean, if you don't have confidence, you're not going to be able to do anything. You should be confident in yourself because uh, if you don't believe in yourself, and that's the other thing with Jupiter, if you don't believe in yourself, ain't no one else going to believe in your shit. Like, to, like, here's like, here's the thing. Go, go, go and try to talk to, you know, guy or girl, whatever your situation is, go and talk to someone out of your league. I've seen, the ugliest dudes literally pick up the hottest women just because they were confident. They didn't give a fuck. And they were funny, too. That's very ju uh, jovial. And the thing is, you got to be smooth. Like, Jupiter and Aries is not about, like, oh, I'm the best. I'm confident. Blah, blah, blah. Let me bust in the door. This moon and Libra going opposite Jupiter is, like, you can express your confidence by being a moon and Libra, by being really fucking smooth. And, you know... What's that saying? Uh, I'd rather be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. This is one of those moments where, you know, you are a warrior and that needs to be, I think that needs to be true. But um, not that you're necessarily in a garden, but you are in a situation where I believe that just being over the top Jupiter might be a little bit intense. And if you really want to express your confidence, you do it smooth. You do it through a peace negotiation. You do it through you know, your words, you do it through your emotions. You don't necessarily just, you don't always have to bust down the door. And that's not to say that that's not coming up, but I just want you guys to know once the moon goes into Libra and it goes opposite Jupiter and Aries, I think the question is if you have to Kool-Aid man and break through the wall and you need to be Jupiter and Aries, do a little classy, be, do it smooth. You ever been smooth? Come on, just be smooth about it. I don't think a lot of you will have problems with that, to be honest, though. Uh, I fucked up on this. Mercury's still retrograde for me. I'm sorry. Um, the moon is not going to go opposite Uranus. The moon is going to go opposite Mars. This is the correct part right here. On Thursday, the moon's just going to go opposite Mars. Um, here's the thing with that. Uh, this is where you might need to kick the warrior part into gear, or at least uh, you need to be better at negotiating because um, the moon will go. The moon's going to go opposite Jupiter, right? Where it's like, hey. If you really believe this, like, well, for example, this whole Ukraine war thing, uh, the mainstream media has been gaslighting everyone into thinking that you that Ukrainians will win, and they won't. Uh, this is something that even Obama said. 
for whatever reason, that's a conservative talking point, but it's not like liberals literally said it five, like a couple years ago. But uh, do you know how wars won? Like nine times out of 10, it's through a peace deal. It's through a peace negotiation. Sometimes you're going to win. Sometimes you're going to lose. But how much do you want to keep fucking fighting? How much more do you want to literally lose uh, for sake of ego and pride? Uh, there's going to be a peace negotiation with that. And I want you to think about peace negotiations on Thursday because the moon's going to be in Libra and it's going to be opposite Mars and Aries. Mars, we're talking about fights. We're talking about conflicts. We're talking about confrontation. And there is a difference between, here's the thing, Jupiter and Aries, you can walk into the building. Well, and I said this last week, if because this is something I literally live my life by because it took me... Like, I was a moon in Libra. I, I I was. I am a moon in Libra. I used to be the biggest doormat. In fact, I still struggle with that. Because I just want to, I just want everything to work out. I just want everything to be nice. And that doesn't always work that way. Jupiter and Aries is like, you could still have the confidence and, you know, be nice about it. But you still got to fight. You still have to come to the negotiating table. You still got to say, well, this is what I need out of it. So what's up? Again, if people got to deal, if you have to deal with, everyone's bullshit then they have to deal with your bullshit like stop being apologetic for like existing like like if someone's got a pro like if someone is causing all these problems with you and you're just kind of laying down and being a doormat i wish i could just like lay down and put the camera on me but i can't like you're just gonna get walked on and so you know when moon goes into libra and the jupiter goes into aries you can be like hey this is what we're doing but you can't just bend over and say, oh, okay, we'll just take whatever. Like the moon and Libra going opposite Mars and Aries is very like, you still have to fight for what you want. You still have to fight for what you believe and you can't just be like, well, I guess this is how it is. Well, I guess we have to make peace. Like Mars and Aries is still fighting. It's still, it's still, it still wants to fight. It's still about, you know, confrontation, direct energy is probably my favorite word for Mars and Aries. Like direct, impulsive sparking energy it's getting closer to chiron which we're going to talk about but as that moon goes into libra there's got to be a, a a balancing act with that and i think the moon in libra going opposite mars is going to be really stressful for that moon in libra and so there is a balance here right like how much do you fight for and how much do you like again um it's so important when it comes to the mars and aries stuff is again rather be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war and I, what I also mean by that is like, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Just because it's right also doesn't mean you should. Um, I think as Mars is in Aries, I think it's just going to be really, for a lot of you, let me, let me speak to the day chart people for a moment. Cool your jets a little bit. You're going to be a little bit pissed and you can still fight for what you want, but it has to be negotiated. It ha you can't just blast off in, in, in anger. And for the night people, this is for the night people who are a little bit more emotional and sensitive with the moon and not and Mars is much more uh, better for the night people. Be a little bit more confrontational. Don't just be like, oh, well, you know, I'd rather have peace than get what I want. So it's just one of those things of what's hard about Mars and Aries opposite this moon in Libra is the balancing act will be difficult. It's not going to be easy. One second, if you that Mars and Aries is going to really want to push the envelope a little bit. And when you tip the scales, it doesn't always look good. You know, when it comes to, uh, gosh, I mean, when it comes to the rule of law on almost anything, it's real, like, the you can, in one second, literally, like, well, in self-defense situations. If you're in a self-defense situation, like, in California, for example, um, a lot of people don't know this. If someone broke into your house in California... And like was trying to like whether steal your stuff or attack you and you shot them, there's a good chance that you're gonna get more in trouble than that person because why would you shoot an innocent person who just stumbled into your house? And uh those boundaries are really hard to see all the time. So with Mars and Aries, just because like you've got the energy and you've got the know-how and you've got the capability, doesn't like you have to use the appropriate amount of uh of action for the um situation at hand you can't just say oh this is a little bit not going my way fuck it let me just go let me just rage quit you have to be appropriate with your energy you are responsible for your actions not your husband not your wife not your boss you are responsible for how you react 
how you respond. You can't fix or change other people. You can't. As much as you, I love saying that because you guys will be like, I know I can't do that, but then you're still going to try to fix or change people. You can't fix or change anybody. You can only fix or change how you respond to a situation. And in this, and in this scenario, you're going to get triggered. And the question is, are you going to a, a respond appropriately? Are you going to match the energy for what's given to you? Or are you just going to rage quit and go too far and untip the scales? So on Thursday, be mindful of your energy. You still have to go to the negotiating table. And when you go, have you ever been to a negotiating table? Uh, have you ever tried to sell something? They're going to give you, they're going to lowball you and it's going to piss you off. And you, but you can't be like, well, blah, blah, blah. You, you have to negotiate, have to negotiate. That brings us to Friday. Friday, Mercury is going to be training Pluto. Exactly. Again, this has been going on forever. This is a long horoscope. I didn't mean for this to be going so long. Uh, cause again, it's not that big of a week, but Friday, Mercury is going to train Pluto. Then it's going to, the, then the moon will train Saturn and then the moon will go into Scorpio. Ugh, don't like moon Scorpio transits. As the moon's in Libra and it starts to trine Saturn, things kind of work out here, right? We have Saturn and Aquarius. We're talking about like authorities. Um, you know, um, Saturn and Aquarius is really a lot of the social divide stuff, to be honest with you. Like it's kind of almost impossible to see at this moment. Um, but as the moon's trining Saturn, there is a lot of peace being here, which is probably nice because Saturn and Aquarius has been fucked. You know, you also got, you guys have to remember, I'm going to be making a podcast about Pluto and Aquarius, but if you really want to know what Pluto and Aquarius is going to be like, imagine the past two years times a million. The, the governments and the corporations want us to hate each other so then they can make more money off of us and own us. Uh, and I bring this up because as the moon's in Libra trining Saturn, you have to like, where can we find the middle ground? We are stronger in numbers. We are stronger together. But we have to like find that peace. And I think that moon in Libra training Saturn is a really good opportunity to find some peace with your communities, find some, you know, comfort with some authorities, working things out. It sounds really good. Like the sun's in Gemini, moon's in Libra, Saturn's in Aquarius. A lot of like, again, like serious, rational, like ideas all kind of coming together. Uh, the problem is, what was the other thing that was going on? Oh yeah, Mercury shines Pluto. <clears throat> I mean, Mercury shining Pluto, I... <sighs> You need to be a little bit like, well, the pow power feels good. Power is a drug on, um, and y you know, it's, I don't really look at this as bad, but it's just one of those things with Pluto. Again, power corrupts, absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. And it's one of those things where if you are going, if you, if you, if you're one of those sickos that have never had power before, and then all of a sudden get power and then abuse it, honestly get fucked. But um, this is one of those moments where, you know, it's about being responsible and mature and, you know, take that power, wield that power. There's nothing worse than someone who has a position of power and doesn't use it. And so you need to use it. It's just about having the right balance to it. You know, um, I've been, I was looking, I've been getting a little bit more into the Cuban Missile Crisis since we're going to be having some type of, in my opinion, August 1st does not look good for any type of nuclear activity, but, um, you know, there was a lot of times where this world could have ended, but it took someone just being like, you know what? I could hit the big red button and end this shit right now, but I'm not going to because I want things to be peaceful. So ask yourself how you can do that in your own world. You could push the big red button whenever you want, and there's power in that, but you take away your power by pushing that button. There's more power in knowing that you could do something, but changing it anyway. So anyway, uh, then the moon's going to go into Scorpio, uh, which I don't like. Again, that's just my own personal opinion. Maybe there's a few of you out there that are like, I love the moon in Scorpio, which, okay. Uh, but the moon's going to go into Scorpio, and it's going to feel a little intense, right? We're getting closer to Venus conjoining Uranus, but as the moon goes into Scorpio, our emotions, our body, there's going to be the sinking feeling. The analogy I like to think of with the moon in Scorpio is it's like, have you ever like leaned back in a chair and then all of a sudden like almost tipped back and then like that you have that feeling in your gut where you like almost fell. That's very uh, moon and Scorpio. So going into Friday night, into Saturday, there will be this kind of intense lethargic feeling. And then we go into Saturday. Uh, Saturday is really the biggest day that we have. Venus will conjoin Uranus. The moon will go opposite Venus and Uranus and the moon will conjoin the South Node. Ooh, sounds a little exhausting. 
But as the moon goes into square, well, number one, let's talk about Venus conjoining Uranus. Guys, like, you have to do something different. You have to. Uh, whether that's, and you don't even have to try with this. This is something that's just going to happen anyway. But as Venus is in Taurus, we like what we like. We're enjoying what we're enjoying. Um, as it conjoins Uranus, there will be a shakeup here, for better or for worse. Um, but I think the shakeup will be good. Do something different. Do something innovation. Get out of your comfort zone. I feel like I would I would say like maybe you guys need to cool it down, but I feel like there's more people watching this that are stuck in their comfort zone than there are people that are like, you know, living life radically. But maybe that's just my opinion. Maybe you prove me wrong. Um, but as the moon goes into Scorpio and it goes opposite Venus, like it's not gonna feel good. Like getting out of your comfort zone doesn't feel comfortable. But the way I look at this is, are you going to listen to your emotions while the moon's in Scorpio on the south node? Because these aren't even emotions. This is just fear. This isn't even like, again, I said this last week. You guys got to get clear on what your intuition is. Because a lot of you guys, a lot of your intuition is just your super negative internal monologue that just tells you everything wrong. And you just listen to that. And it's not your intuition. Um, I think as the moon's in Scorpio opposite Venus and Uranus, like, if you want to, do you want to, it's the, the question is, do you want Venus and Taurus or do you want the moon and Scorpio? Because the way to get the Venus and Taurus stuff is to not be comfortable. You're going to be out of your comfort zone, but you are going to, again, you got to be doing something different. You got to be doing something innovative. You got to be liberating yourself some way. You got to, again, if you want to, like, Uranus and Taurus is going to shake things up and you kind of have to be ahead of the game on that. Like if you're living in California and you're expecting to not feel an earthquake, you will feel kind of freaked out when an earthquake happens. It's all about, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. But I think uh, while the moon's in Scorpio, it's going to be really easy to be like, oh my God, this is too uncomfortable. Oh my God, oh my God. Because it's a fixed sign and all the fixed signs so the Taurus, Aquarius, Leos, and uh, uh, Scorpios want everything to stay the same. We want everything to be fixed. And that's just not how this world works. Change is inevitable. It's the only thing that's constant in this universe. And as Venus conjoins Uranus, the things that are, the things that are usually fixed are not going to be, but it's Venus. We're talking about value. I mean, we're talking about food value. I mean, you're probably going to see stuff about like Uranus is food innovation. And we can talk about that way later on. But as Venus conjoins Uranus, you're going to see whether it's food, fashion, money, value. There's going to be some type of innovation there. You've got to be leaning towards that. And the moon in Scorpio is, I think taking those steps might be a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, it is going to bring up some feelings, uh, but then the moon will conjoin the south node later that day. And this is why I said what I said. You got to dump those feelings out. Leave your feelings at the door. Moon and Scorpio, get rid of that fear. Get rid of that. Also, get rid of that resentment. Get rid of that revenge. You know, like with the Scorpio stuff, it's amazing how in the spiritual community and the astrology community, well, and I think this is also just kind of coincides with the whole internet, like personality stuff of like, it's cool to like, like, like there's so much revenge that's popularized in popular culture right now. And, um, I think it's kind of stupid. I think it's kind of weak. Um, if you really want to be revengeful, I mean like the best revenge is your own success, but I think if you're fueled by hate, um, or at least hate for someone else to do things for yourself. I would try to change that internal monologue a little bit and try to do things for you. Um, you can still have, I'm not saying you can't be hateful. You are talking to, I hate everything. Um, so, I, so I'm not saying you can't hate, but when the moon comes on the south node, you've got to let go of that resentment because if someone fucked you over, they don't give a fuck, right? If someone fucked you over and you could hold on to that pain, that resentment, and holding on to that pain, that resentment, does more damage to you than it does to them. Do you get that? So let's say, oh my God, my, you know, even, and this is, and you're, I'm not perfect. I struggle with this shit all the time because I am also human. Um, and this is, I'm taking my own advice. I am not, I have to deal with this too, okay? This is in my 12th house. I have a lot of shit I got to let go of. And what I want to say is, if you're going to hold on to these past events and that pain and that hurt, it does more damage to you and it doesn't even affect the person that hurts you. It doesn't. I'm not saying you just need to get over it and walk away from it, 
but you've got to figure something out to get rid of that pain. You've got to figure something out to get rid of that resentment because it is killing you from the inside. And you hold on to that pain and you hold on that resentment and it, and, and it makes you right, right? Because there's, again, people... You're not a fucking victim, number one. We can, we've all been victimized before, but if you choose the victim mindset, you are weak and I do not pity you because you're looking for pity and I think it's pathetic. This moon in Scorpio on top of the south node, you've got to let go of that pain. You've got to let go of that resentment. You've got, again, someone could have, you could have, as an astrologer, do you guys know what stories I hear from people and what, let me just put it to you this way. With the clients that I've had, trust me, someone has had life way worse than you have. It would make your shit. I, I've had a, I, if I didn't do this job, I would still think I had a shitty life. And then I've talked to so many people. I'm like, wow, holy fuck. Do I have things amazing? Cause people have really had some hard times really. But the thing is at the end of the day, you can sit there and say, well, this happened to me and this happened to me and this happened to me. And you're right. It did happen to you. You're right. You are a victim. Well, guess what? If you're going to be a victim, then you're also going to be weak. You're also going to be in denial. You're also going to have revenge. You're also going to have resentment built up. And then you're not going to be happy. And then you're going to just be kind of an asshole to everyone else around you. And, you're, and then you'll be taking from people, which is just continuing the cycle. Like, you can't be a taker. Like, you have to say, okay, I went through this. No, you didn't deserve what you went to go through. No, it's not right or it's okay. But you have to be the one. Like, it's still, it's the same thing with the mental illness. It's your brain. Sorry. We all have fucked up shit in our brains. Everyone does. But you've got to, but it is your brain. It is your mind to say that you are not responsible for your actions because of a way that you felt is irresponsible. It's weak. It's pathetic. So this moon conjoining on the south node, guys, get rid of it. Let go of it. It's hard. It ain't easy. It is hard. Do you know when you're holding on to something for dear fucking life? So many, or so many of you are holding on to these victim stories for dear life, because it gives you identity and it gives you meaning and it gives you purpose, but it hurts you more than it helps you. Really. Don't be afraid to let go. It's, I'm not sitting here being like, why aren't you doing it so easy? It is hard. But what's harder is living a shitty life full of nothing but negative emotions and hate and resentment it is easier to let go of this stuff and to move on. And again, I'm not saying I'm perfect in all this stuff. Like I, I got to deal with all this stuff too. I got to deal with all this stuff too and I'm not looking forward to it. But I'm going to do it anyway because I'm fucking, because I want to make changes in my life because I want something better for myself and not just the fucking same. Wow, this is a long horoscope and I kind of thought it was going to be a short one, but I feel like that's usually how I say things. Uh, Sunday, the moon's going to go opposite Mercury uh, and then the moon will go into Sagittarius uh, afterwards, and then it will try and Jupiter. Uh, and then we're building up really for the full moon. So on uh, Sunday, again, moon at the last degrees of Scorpio here, and it goes opposite Mercury and Taurus. It, it, it is what it is. Uh, I think as the moon's in Scorpio opposite Mercury and Taurus, you have to be, well, it's, it's for example, um, if you want to make these big changes, you are not going, it's going to be harder if you don't understand the why. You have to ask why, because it's getting over your victim story is not going to be easy because you're going to have a million reasons as to why you should keep it. But you have to ask why, why do I want better for myself? Why do I want to make these changes? Mercury being, again, communication, logistics, planning, it's in Taurus. Look how much focus there is on just value and security and comfort here. And Mercury's in Taurus being like, again, this it's still on the North Node. It's about to go back into Gemini. What do you want? What do you value? What are you fixated on? And that moon in Scorpio being opposite Mercury and Taurus is, there's a price to pay. Moon in Scorpio going opposite, it's, there's, I guess there's a price to pay as well as, this might even be really good for like expressing emotions too, especially like pain, resentment, hurt, any of that. I think that's a really good time for this. Um, and I think that's good because the moon immediately goes into Sagittarius after that. And when you talk about, I mean, and we're building up for the full moon in Sag. So again, sun's in Gemini. We're taking all this new information. Moon in Sag, is, that's going to give us freedom. Information gives us hope. It gives us freedom. It gives us adventure. It gives us something to believe in. It gives us stories to work with. And I think as the moon's in Scorpio opposite Mercury and Taurus is, there's a pretty cathartic conversation to have. Um, but there's also a lot of clarity of like, hey, 
if if this is what you want, these are the prices that you have to pay. You have for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. You are not going to manifest anything from the universe if you are not giving something in return, if you are not surrendering something in return, if you are not offering something in return. That's just how this universe works. I don't make the rules. I don't. But as that happens, then the moon's going to go into Sagittarius and it's going to stuck fucking trying Jupiter. If you want this Jupiter juice, you need to be you need to be real and raw during this moon and Scorpio transit, okay? Because as the moon goes into Sag, there's two things. Either you're going to feel like you're flying, like you are free. The moon's going to try and Jupiter. You're going to be like, I can do fucking anything I want. I am capable of anything I want to do because I faced all of my fears. I got out of my comfort zone. I did. I changed the things that I needed to change. And now the moon's in Sag. I feel good. It's trining Jupiter. You can do anything that you want to. Or if you bitch out of this, moon and Sag is just going to be escapism. You're just going to want to escape and run away. And I think while Jupiter's there, it's kind of hard with Jupiter and Aries to just escape. You know, uh, what's that saying? You can run away from the cops, but you can't run away from the radio or the helicopter. I want you to think about that uh, in terms of like your own mind. Because you can do all the drugs you want. You can do, you could drink all you want. You can party, but you're never going to escape that shitty internal monologue. You're never going to escape your pain. You're never going to escape. You're never going to fool yourself either, by the way. You guys aren't dumb. You guys like to pretend that you can fool yourselves by going into this area, going to that area to escape, and it doesn't work. But you try it anyway. So my suggestion is on Sunday. Uh, Sunday will be a, well, I think over this weekend, if you, if you do the work, Sunday's going to feel great. So I'll just leave it like that. Uh, what's the button for next week? There it is. Um, I'm still learning all my buttons here. Holy shit. Look at next week. This isn't a big week. I know I've talked a lot. I've talked quite a while for this week for it not being too big. Uh, next week, guys, really, we start the week off full moon in Sagittarius. Mercury goes back into Gemini. Still in shadow, though. Mars conjoins Chiron. Oh, that will feel so good. I'm so looking forward to Mars conjoining Chiron. Venus conjoins the North Node. That, I mean, like, we. this alone is some crackhead energy. I love also, too, like, people are like, oh, my God, don't say crackhead because that's, like, offending the crackhead people. My whole family is addicts. I'm allowed to fucking talk about crackheads. Um, Venus is going to conjoin the North Node. Uh, this is just a cracked out amount of energy right here, guys. This is not subtle at all. Then Mercury leaves shadow. Thank God. Uh, we can finally move on to something else. Uh, Venus will square Saturn. I don't know how I feel about that yet because Venus squaring Saturn also coincides with Venus sextiling Neptune. So, um... Quite like this is, I'm not gonna lie, this is quite like next week is gonna be a really long week to talk about. This is not, this is kind of a mouthful of transits happening. But I guess with that being said, let me leave you with my final comments. I really don't have much else to say. I pretty much said everything I needed to. It's not a big week, it really isn't. It's just day to day stuff. It's just the moon transits, you guys know. But it's the day to day stuff that changes. If you're waiting for the big astrology day, be like, oh, well, when this happens, everything will change. You're probably right because, for, for example, I get I, a lot of people just think like you don't have to try for astrology. The astrology is going to happen anyway. And I talk about that in my delineation episode about purpose. You don't have to try. It's going to work out anyway. But it's in these moments, these day to day moments, these monotonous moments where the real big changes occur. Really? Because if you're if you're just waiting on every single big astrology day transit, you're going to exhaust yourself. You need to make these changes during these smaller times. You need to make these, those subtle differences in your day-to-day on those lunar transits, those will be making the biggest differences in your life. And I think that's what you should be paying attention to. So anyway, that's what I have for you guys. I really love and appreciate you guys so much. Uh, And I guess I'll just be seeing you next week.